after that come a question, why only one God? Could he not create another God like himself? Actually, the implication here is that the existence of dual or plural deities is possible and hence probable uh, in the view of a polytheist. Uh, uh, however, it, uh, however, if the questioner claims that God can create another like himself, we ask how can this created being uh, be God? God who created all things when it has itself been created. How can it be like God since it has a beginning whereas God has existed from eternity? And in reality, the phrase create another God is an erroneous, erroneous uh, contradiction uh, because the mere fact that something is created means that it cannot be God. It is obviously illogical and irrational to say that something is God and cannot be God simultaneously. Again, God should not be created. So, the implication that here uh, 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 is that the existence of dual or plural deities is possible. It is possible, okay? And hence probable in the view of the polycist. Yet, if the questioner claims that God can create another uh, God like himself, we ask a question. How can this created being be God? Who created all things? God created all things. Now how this second God to be created being a God? God who created all things, when it has itself been created, how can it be like God since it has a beginning, whereas God, the Creator, has existed from eternity? And in reality, the phrase create another God is erroneous. Erroneous. Contradiction. Why? Because of the mere fact that Something is created means that it cannot be God. It is obviously illogical and irrational to say that something is God and cannot be God simultaneously. For the other implication in this question is that if we answer he cannot, then the power of God must be limited negating his divinity. These suggestions, these suggestions are not valid. What are these the suggestions? The other implication in this question is that if we answer he cannot, so the power of God must be limited, negating his divinity. These suggestions are not valid because the absolute and unlimited power of God pertains to what is rationally possible and not what is rationally impossible. So when we say no, which is correct, it does not mean that the power of God is limited. Rather, it affirms the perfection of his power, meaning that he is not incapable of doing anything that is rationally possible. Again, the other implication in the question in this question is that if we answer he cannot, then the power or his power as God must be limited and negating his divinity. 
Actually, these suggestions are not valid because the absolute and unlimited power of God pertains uh, to what is rational. It is, it pertains to what is rational possible, rationally possible, and not what is rationally impossible. So when we say no, which is correct, it does not mean that the power of God is limited. Rather, it affirms the perfection of his power, meaning that he is not incapable of doing anything that is rationally possible. Our minds cannot grasp the extent of his power, nor can our imaginations. And therefore, we must admit our inability to contain the existence and the nature of God within the limit of our intellects. So comes another question. What is the purpose of our creation? Non-believers are unable to provide any convincing reason, any convincing reason. Again, what is the purpose of our creation? Actually, non-believers are unable to provide any convincing reason for the existence of this universe or of human life. People who believe there is a creator assume that creation occurring by his will uh, but the but in a world where everything is shown to have a purpose, it is naturally for it is it is natural for human being to wonder about the purpose of our creation, his own creation. Uh, uh, again, uh, people who believe there is a creator assume uh, that creation occurring by his will, uh, but in a world where everything is shown to have a purpose, it is natural for a human being to wonder about the purpose of his own creation. One is surely justified in accept, in, in, uh, in exec, uh, expecting the Creator One is surely justified in expecting the Creator who put us on his earth, on this earth, to inform us why he did so and what he expects of us. Again, non-believers are unable to provide any convincing reason for the existence of this universe or of human life. People who believe there is a creator assume that creation occurring by his will. But in a world where everything is shown to have a purpose, it is natural for a human being to wonder about the purpose of his creation. One is surely justified in expecting the Creator who put us in this earth to inform us why did he did so and what he expects of us. And the Quran informs us uh, that he did just that. It says God created us for a test here on earth, conveying his words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in chapter 23 verses 115, 116 is saying in Surah al أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ Do you think that we created you uselessly? And then that to us you would not be returned? In Surah Al-Mu'minun 23, chapter 23, verses 115, 115, 116. An unbeliever might decide 
that the objective of his life will be to the objective of his life is will be to collect wealth to obtain position uh, or purpose pleasure uh, to the greatest extent possible uh, but actually none of this will benefit him in the long run according to his final scripture god created man to test him with certain responsibilities as stated in uh, 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 19 7 uh, 16 7 uh, 2 and uh, 70 uh, 2 uh, 76 uh, 2 he did not intended life he did not intended life on this earth to necessarily be comfortable or satisfying but merely uh, a trial of limited duration the punishment and rewards of which will be due to uh, in hereafter again to analyze this uh, god created man to test him with certain responsibilities as stated uh, in the following uh, verses and chapters uh, 18 7 18 7 18 7 uh, chapter 18 uh, verse 7 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying inna ja'alna ma ala al-ardi zinatan laha linabluwahum ayyuhum ahsanu amala all are gaining the same meaning nearly uh, I'll, uh, tell, uh, I'll uh, mention them and then tell the uh, collective meaning of all in chapter uh, 18 surah al-kahf verse 7 Allah is saying uh, we made everything on earth as a decoration for a test, as a test, to, to test who is better in his doing. And we will make everything after that uh, 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 equal land to be resurrected. Uh, and then this is in chapter uh, Surah Al-Kaf, in a chapter... Uh, 18 verse 7 and again in Surah Al-Mulk in Surah Al-Mulk uh, 67 uh, uh, chapter 67 uh, verse uh, 2 Allah is saying الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created death and earth, uh, death and life, to test who is better in his doing. He is the Almighty, the Forgiver. And again, in Surah Al Insan, 76, verse 2, in Surah Al Insan, Allah is saying, Inna khalaqnaku, Inna khalaqna al insana min nutfatin amshajin nabitali, fajalnahu sami'an. Basira. We created man with hearing and uh, uh, ability to hear and, uh, and see uh, 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 in order to test him. All this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he uh, 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 is telling, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling that he did not intend life on his on, he, on this earth, his earth. He did not intend life to necessarily be comfortable and satisfying but actually merely a trial of limited duration the punishment and rewards of which will be due in uh, hereafter the punishment or the reward will occur in hereafter after uh, resurrection as mentioned previously most creation uh, most of creation is muslim in uh, that it is uh, programmed to obey the uh, physical law laws set by God and this is why the universe functions uh, with balanced equilibrium uh, man however was given a free will and the ability to either obey or disobey but God will not allow his 
uh, universal balance to be upset I de- uh, 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 indefinitely by uh, deficient, uh, corrupt, uh, and sinful people. And so he only grants human beings a measure of freedom in a temporary world. The theme of birth, development, decline, and death provides each with the opportunity to prove to himself without a doubt what he will deserve on the day of judgment, which God created for the manifestations of his ultimate justice. So again, this point needs to be uh, mentioned again uh, before finishing this point, is that uh, uh, this life is uh, very meaningful and purposeful uh, to the believing Muslim because he realizes that it will determine his outcome and permanent position in the next life. He lives to earn the approval of his creator in uh, preparation for the final return to him. Because again, uh, most of creation is uh, Muslim in that the uh, programmed Uh, to obey the physical laws uh, set by God and uh, his uh, and uh, this is why the universe functions with a balanced equilibrium. Man however was given uh, a free will and ability either to obey or to, to disobey but surely God will not allow his universal balance to be upset indefinitely by uh, deficient, corrupt, sinful people. And so he only grants human beings a measure of freedom uh, in a temporary world. The theme of birth, development, decline and death provides each with opportunity to prove to himself without doubt what he will deserve on the day of judgment, which God created that day of judgment for the manifestation of his ultimate justice. This life is very meaningful and purposeful for uh, the believing Muslim because he realizes that it will determine his outcome and permanent position in the next life. And he lives to earn the approval of his creator in preparation for the final return to him. We all recognize that people make things to perform a specific function for functions for them. In other words, uh, to serve them. God has made us to serve him. But the one major difference, it is not for the benefit of the creator, himself, but actually for the benefit of us, his creation. The purpose of our existence is thus stated in the Quran, I did not create jinn and mankind except to worship me. In uh, Surah Al-Dhariyat 56, chapter 51, See, I want to complete this verse because it gives us the full meaning. Uh, see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنُ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِسْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَالرَّزَّاقُ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينَ The analysis of the uh, actual cause of our Uh, creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I didn't create them except to worship me. I didn't want, I do, I do not want any w- provision from them or I'm not in need of them to feed me. Why? Because Allah is the all provider and the strongest and the most capable and the sustainer for his creation. He isn't in need of us. So, according to that, I did not create jinn and ins, 
except and mankind except to worship me then man's worship of god is not automatic like the vast majority of created beings but by his own choice and effort and this is what intended is in and the, and this is what entitles him to honor and reward again man's worship of god isn't automatic like the vast majority of created beings all created beings are obligatory worship allah heavens every of his creation man's worship of god isn't automatic like the vast majority of created beings but his own choice by his own choice and effort and this is what entitles him to honor and reward he should how should one worship god in order to fulfill that purpose this question can undoubtedly best be answered by him subhanahu wa ta'ala god had ha god allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided every element of his creation living and intimate with guidance allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided every element of his creation living and uh, 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 in intimate with guidance we can thus accept that we can thus expect that he would provide us with guidance as well his revelation instructs human beings or humanity what to do his revelation instructs humanity what to do what to avoid and the reason for it it forms man what is expected of him how to accomplish it and the results of continual positive effort through prophet muhammad may allah exalt his mention god revealed to all human man uh, to all mankind uh, uh, to man the he uh, uh, through prophet muhammad may allah exalt his mention allah subhanahu wa ta'ala god revealed to man the ways of worship suitable to his physical and psychological nature and individual talents and in harmony with this particular role on the earth these in combination are what enable him subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill the purpose of his creation we will stop here to continue next time inshallah السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته